This is Mariam, and aka Marjum, <laughs> I guess. And she's uh, done a lot of these, so she's going to be your demonstrator, and I'm going to get in on her hands for this and let her talk us through it. Can you see that? Okay, so basically the way I think of these things is they're just supposed to be like little creatures that, you know, come from you and that you created and they don't have to represent really anything. They're just kind of fun and they can sort of hold like this little aura that they have in them. You know, people think rocks have auras, which I can neither agree nor disagree with, but I wouldn't be surprised. So it's like creating this own, it's got to have an energy to it, you know, whether it's like happy or sassy or like, it's just, you can like mold it to have a feeling, just something that you like. And everyone's is different, like no one makes the same thing. So for this amount of play, I was, you could maybe even make three out of Let's this. do three. It depends on how big you want to I make want it. I want like the three, three little bears. I want three sizes. Well, so it, but it also depends on the rock you're using. You want it to be proportional to the, it doesn't have to, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be any type of way. Would you like some more rocks to choose um, from? Sure. All right. The reason that I picked the two that you had on these bags is because this, this, so when you're trying to pick which colors are more compatible and stuff like that, just think about there are like complementary colors, which is something I do a lot. So this is orange clay and blue is the complementary of orange, meaning that on the color wheel, it's opposite to it. So these two colors will always work together, blue and orange. You could also do green and red or yellow and purple. You can also do, oh, there's more rocks. You can also do like simple black or white rocks, go, can go with any color because they're pretty neutral. Um, so yeah, I usually either do one of those two. Here's a surface to work with. Thank you. Okay. Now, for the record, so, they only get about five rocks to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you do with what you do what you can with what you have. Just um, keep in mind what whatever colors you think look good together. But if we're going on the basis of color theory, complementary colors, or colors that are close to each other, um, in in this case, I mean a black. I feel like a black would look really good with this orange too. It's so it's so bright and the black is just so out there. So we could also do something with this or the shiny. I missed this little one teal well. brown one. So See, you could do bag. that, but I would say like that they sort of wash each other out. These two colors when they're next to each other. Like I would do this on a blue or a purple would look really good. Well, with they this, all got kind, kind of, of a yellow. Pink, pink color. Everyone got the same color. Um, pink, red, they didn't have all the same, but we got them like the, the skin tone, the pink skin tone. Type. Okay. And some people got like a little brighter red. Anyway. Well, <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't matter that much. So just, so, I mean, so pick your, pick your rock and then based on this, like, how, you know, you have to kind of picture in your head how big you want the body to be. I don't necessarily want the body to be this big, like, but, but actually that might work. I don't know. You just, just start off by like squishing it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of heat to get it to be moldable. So make sure your hands are, I didn't do that before I started, but make sure your hands are clean because sometimes the dust and stuff from your hands and even on your surface will get stuck to it. And when it's a really solid color, it's kind of obvious sometimes when dust gets attached to it. But at the same time, like, again, it's not a big deal. This is supposed to be a simple little task. So I have a ball. And if I look at it with this head, I mean, think about the orientations that you want, that you think that this could be to sort of resemble a human-like figure. I mean, I feel like it could, where, like, where do you think its face could be? Maybe, I don't know, Dad, what do you think? The flatter side. I feel like that's kind of funny looking. <laughs> it is funny looking. That's right. So, so... I'm imagining that I'll probably use this flatter side as its face because it'll be a good surface to do it on. And then...
There's one. So you're gonna do this. You're gonna be sticking all these pieces together, like the eyes and the rock all together, but keep in mind that they don't, they won't adhere to each other naturally. So by the, at the end of this, what I think it's on the list or whatever you guys will be seeing, you will, will, you may want to like pop, you'll be able to pop the rock off and stuff after it's all baked and then you can super glue it back together. And that way, because these eyes will come off very easily once it's baked because there's just not much grip between the clay and the rock. So, I mean, we've got this little weird looking dude. You can, I mean, sometimes I like to squish the eye shapes and you can give them different emotions like just by squishing it I've made him look like he's like his eyes are squintier like he's more tired or something like that so just think of like the subtle little things you can do to give him some give them some character hey look this one already has eyes yeah sometimes oh, let me see sometimes the ro that looks like a face already like that's a mouth sometimes the rocks already have inherent Characteristics. Little characteristics. It's just fun. I, I think it's fun to find like little characteristics and and things that are seen. I don't even know if I want to give him a give him a mouth because this like these lines at the bottom sort of in, are indicative of one. But I might give him a nose. Maybe. Let's see. I might have to keep this. <laughs> no. Um, so I was thinking we could go a step further. Um, so have you messed around with uh, magnets at all? Not really. So if we were to like shove this magnet up his butt, I mean in, into the clay. So there he's got a nose, but I don't like that. So I'm just not gonna do that. But you can do that if you want. So the thing about this is usually when something is pretty thick, um, like this is a chunky piece of clay, so I'm not super worried about it being cooked. This would take probably an hour if you were to go all the way through because this is a this is probably, I mean, it's thicker than an inch. So with the standard Sculpey we're using, it's 275 degrees Fahrenheit and 15 minutes per quarter inch. So this would take more than an hour to bake all the way through. But with things like these that are usually just being like sat somewhere and they're, I mean, they're, they're supposed to be pretty low maintenance, just like hanging out things. Um, I feel like you could probably bake this. I would do it for like 45 minutes or something like now that. Now what about, if what want, if we want to use the toaster oven? It should be the same. You should be able to get the same temperature on a toaster oven. Make sure to matters? not put it on, make sure to put it on bake though. Cause I put, I, when I first started doing this, I ever with clay, I would put it, I put it on toast by accident and it's set. So it should we use the oven or the toaster? I would use the oven just because okay. it's more controlled. So bring it. Do, so we, just, do you have to well, preheat just, it? Yeah, you have to preheat it to 275. Oh, I got to figure out how to use the oven, honey. What do I do? Push the, I mean, the, the top left button. Top left bake. 275 start. start all right so, so we're gonna wait and then put this in there or can we just put it in now I just
just, I usually wait some, it depends on your, I mean, I usually just wait until it preheats, but I do that with everything, but some people put stuff in the oven before it's up All right, let's put it in. That way we can finish this recording. Okay. I'm just very specific. It doesn't matter. Okay, awesome. So we're going to put it in earlier, but okay. Well, you're less likely to burn yourself putting it in, but there they go. Um, so the only time that you have to be really, oh, when I'm, I'm really concerned with like, how long it's being baked if you have really thin pieces connected to really thick pieces. Because if you bake something that's really thin for over too much time, it'll break, like it'll crack really easily. But so these are like have, solid pieces. These are pretty solid, so I'm not, but sometimes people, if you want to do like little deep, like things, which I wouldn't really recommend with Sculpey anyway, because it's pretty, it's pretty fragile. And if you're, if you're moving it, it'll break but if you ever have something that you're making where there's like some of the clay is really thin and some is thick go on the thinner side because the thicker piece as long as that outer part of it is baked i i'm assuming that it's not a big deal but you don't want the thin pieces to just break off <laughs> so how long do we have to leave them before we super glue um i let them sit for at least like 20 minutes before okay so we can really leave them here for a minute they're all good all survived they didn't you kind of expect them to melt don't you and they don't so i would burn myself if i touched them wouldn't i i mean they're not yeah they're pretty hot I would not. <laughs> she touches after well after like five or ten minutes i mean they're not making a good example after to five these or kids. ten minutes they'll be like handleable but i wouldn't i would let them sit for like definitely the, at least ten minutes or so all right we'll come back to those okay so what's going on here so the jams are finished cooking we cooked them for about half an, for like half an hour which i think is sufficient for would, uh, what temperature 275 and how long Fahrenheit. do we let them cool it's probably been about 20 minutes or so did it just tip over yeah so that's something i mean i had secured it a little bit before i put it in but when you're making these like make sure that you have them really well grounded but this you said you wanted to dangle this anyway so yeah but i want him to stand up well it stands up now it's he's just, lopsided he's fine no he's not fine he's like tippy oh yeah well if he's gonna be sitting on a shelf normally it'll be all right okay so basically i just po i popped this off very easily you just put your nail under it and you can just like pop it off and I'm gonna put a little bit of super glue. I don't think we broke the seal on that yet. Oh, how do you do that? You unscrew that. And then And then Usually these have some sort of Yeah, doesn't it have a tip? No. It doesn't? Just have something oh. sharp. Wait a minute. You're saying it doesn't come with the thing? Sometimes they have a little pokey thing. Yeah, there on the should lid, be a little pokey thing on the lid. Um, All right, well, go ahead and talk about the other things you're gonna you're gonna do. Well, so I we're just gonna start pop, popping off all of the things that we put on. We're gonna, oh, I got it. I opened it. What did you open it with? I just used the tip of that. The plastic. Mm -hmm. so, so be careful with the super glue; it doesn't plug up the tip. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, just. Um, you don't usually need a lot and put it like upwards so that glue doesn't come out of it and then um, and then you just sit it on there and just you I think with super glue you only have to hold it for like Three a seconds. little bit before it starts to adhere but I think it takes like a full day for it to really be solid okay so that's that one so that's good and then like look I can literally just probably yep just pop it off Easy peasy. Put and so the glue. base is already shaped right for the head. Yeah, right? so it already fits. This is why you do this after. And then we'll just sit that on there. And we're going to do the eyes, but I'm going to let that dry. No.
Hmm. Looks like he's been crying. Yeah. So there's him. He's very sad. So he's done? He's sad looking, yes. And now I can pop these eyes off. We can't see you.